Awesome. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being in attendance for tonight's webinar, where we will be providing you some tips, some best practices as you begin to plan to host your officer transitions. My name is Jasmine Flores, and I'm one of the consultants for Delta Sigma Pi. I will be presenting tonight's webinar, webinar with Sarah Earl, who is also one of our consultants for Delta Sigma Pi. We would like to discuss how your chapter should approach the end of the term, and in specific, how to transition new officers and what steps to take before getting there, such as how to prepare for those transitions, providing best practices on nominations, election speeches, voting software, and what sections you should be reviewing in your local documents. And of course, we would like to review what should be covered during the transition meeting in order to have the most effective transition in order to avoid some of those unknowns that hopefully you didn't go through this year. All right, there are a couple things you should consider before having your officer transitions, which includes scheduling when to conduct both the officer um, nominations and officer elections. The current officers of the executive committee should create a transition document or they should be utilizing something that was created for them in the past by previous officers. In addition, during the chapter meeting, the chapter can review officer duties, qualifications for positions, and additional items that are located in the chapter bylaws. The most recently approved chapter bylaws and policies procedures are located on the hub under the dashboard module, which is the blue clipboard on the left-hand side. In your chapter bylaws under Article 6, Officer Elections and Officer Duties, you will be able to view the sections uh, taken from the national policies, as well as the specific bylaws that your chapter has decided on, such as the terms of office. Now, if any of those items want to be, if you all want to review them and update them at any time, you are welcome to if they do not conflict with the national um, bylaws or policy procedures. The transparency of reviewing what what specific duties and responsibilities are of each officer position will give some of the brothers who might be interested in running for those positions some insight on what specifically does each officer do within their position. And this is also an opportunity to brainstorm um, ideas or ask the questions of what does it mean to be in specific officer positions. So that the current officers can facilitate that Q&A with those that are interested in the positions so that any, any questions might be answered and points of clarifications can be asked to anyone that is accepting the positions once they are being nominated. Now, in regards to the nomination process, your, your chapter, oh, can we go to the next slide? Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so as you're gearing up for those elections, we recommend considering some of these, these best practices for how to ensure your nomination processes um, starts you know, off the transition on the right foot. Remember to review your section on elections, your chapter can view chapter policies and procedures document as it has specifics for officer elections and the actual nominations based on your chapter's documents. You also want to make sure you keep track of all the incoming nominations during that, that section of the meeting and that you know everyone is really, really well prepared when the nominations actually take place on the day of elections. You can utilize Excel sheets, Google Docs, Word document, any type of resource or platform that makes it easiest for you to share those nomination, nominations with the rest of your chapter. Per policy, all collegiate members in good standing shall be notified of the date, time, and place for holding the elections of the officers, and it should be distributed within 10 days prior to the date of the election. Going into a little bit in candidate speeches, um, this is a little bit more on how they should be structured. Speeches can be conducted in person or in a virtual setting. Pre-recorded speeches are also something that you may, may consider as you're navigating through this process. When deciding what format 
you want the speeches to be held, please be sure to consider the time allotted of how, how long each speech will take place. Also take into consideration that Q and A process of if the brothers are going to be in person and you know, you're watching a pre-recorded um, speech, how is that candidate going to answer the questions that are presented in front of them? As I stated before, each officer should have a set time for their speech to maintain consistency across all candidates and across all officer positions. Setting that designated time also allows some sort of structure when each candidate is preparing for their speech and preparing to present in front of the chapter. Some things to also consider as uh, you know, your candidates are kind of discussing what what they should be bringing up to the rest of the chapter. They ultimately should be providing enough information so that the chapter is able to make a very informed decision on who is best qualified for each specific officer position. Remember to brainstorm prior to listening to each speech, what questions are gonna be asked of each candidate. I would also um, recommend to brainstorm questions that might not be at might not be spoken on during each each speech. All right, so prior to conducting your elections, I keep on <laughs> talking about looking at your local uh, bylaws and policy procedures. I'm going to say it again, review your documents prior to, you know, formalizing that specific meeting. Your chapter must meet its quorum. Can anybody tell me what quorum is? Asking, asking for a friend. <laughs> is there a required number of people to be there to have an official meeting? Absolutely, <laughs> thank you for that. Yes, so the quorum of a chapter is either between one third and 51% of the chapter. So kind of what was stated, you need to have that specific percentage that is located in your chapter documents to have this official meeting and to have um, your elections. In addition, per chapter bylaws, the member receiving a majority of the total votes cast, cast for the office in question shall be declared elected. In the event of a tie between two brothers, an additional the, any additional candidates will be removed from the ballot and a re-vote between the two tied brothers shall be taken. After you do conduct uh, the elections for the nationally recognized positions as listed on the slide, you may have additional officers that are listed within your chapter uh, bylaws that also, um, you know, you want to host those elections for. Some of these additional officers might include webmaster, historian, in some cases of specific chapters. These are appointed positions that are appointed by the chapter president. So again, review your documents and see what specifics, uh, specific officer positions are elected on or appointed by the chapter president. Awesome. So then, you know, once you have all of these policies and procedures in place and you're looking over your documents, you then want to select a software tool that is going to work best for conducting voting. Um, so there are a lot of different options and different platforms that are being utilized for voting uh, in today's society. So some of these tools that we have heard of chapters utilizing the most are Member Planet, WebEx, Google Forms, uh, Zoom polls, Socrative, and direct polls. So again, it is important to note that the platform must be anonymous. So you should not be able to see who voted for each individual versus another individual. And also when sharing the results of said election, um, the chapter after each vote should just simply announce the winner without even stating how many someone won or lost by. Again, making sure that we keep everything at a uh, same level playing field, especially um, during elections and keeping the professionalism in our chapters. Um, so again, this is going to be very crucial part of the chapter. This is a discussion that you all should have prior to nominations and elections, just to see what platform and what software is going to work best for you. Because oftentimes a lot of these will have sit settings that you'll have to set in order to have the poll, you know, populate or to have something set up prior to have those elections be done properly. So again, making sure that you plan ahead of time 
which one's going to be most viable for your chapter is going to ensure a successful and seamless election. So then also kind of going back to the software tools and everything that is a virtual option to have elections. However, you of course can still have in-person voting, again, anonymous paper voting. Um, that is always an option presented to chapters as well. Please use your local and state guidelines and whatever is presented in front of you um, as the best opportunity based on what your university standards are and related to COVID-19 and whatnot. Um, we like to offer software just simply because everything is digital nowadays. However, paper options are still very much an option for you all as well. Waiting for the slide. There we go, awesome. All right, so then conducting the transition meeting. So you've had your elections, you've had all the votes counted and everything, you have your new officers. So when it comes to conducting the transition meeting, it can be kind of a daunting process. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're first, you, you find a good amount of time to sit down with the old officer who is taking on the position and then with the new person who is taking on the position. Again, accommodate enough time for you and that individual to thoroughly overview the position. Cause you know, I, anybody knows that in a position there's so much that goes into it, months and months of planning and thinking of different things. So again, you wanna discuss that with the new officer who may not understand or be fully aware of what all it entails to be the vice president of pledge education or the vice president of community service. Um, so this conversation should include a review of the officer duties and expectations. So this is a really important piece to the puzzle um, when conducting the transition meeting because it sets the guideline. It sets the foundation of what exactly it entails to be this particular position. Um, so again, a great resource that we will uh, say again throughout this presentation is the CMP guide. And again, this guide is going to give you all the insight into what it is like to be a part of your position, um, what duties and what requirements from the CMP that you are to uphold from being a part of your position. So again, checking out that document, making yourself aware of what exactly uh, you need to do for your position if it's something that you're responsible submitting or somebody else's, vice versa. Uh, it lays everything out very nicely and also gives pretty great descriptions on how to submit things and what those things mean and what we're looking for when we're approving and denying things. So again, having that baseline conversation of this is my duties, this is the sort of things that I need to do on the university side, maybe on the VPCO or the chapter operations rather, and I need to get room, room reservations throughout the university. Again, having those conversations with officer holders can only then um, help that process move seamlessly because then um, essentially there won't be anything lost in translation and you'll save your chapter a lot of hassle and trouble um, you know in the future so that is going to be the first and foremost thing you want to do during a transition meeting and then next you want to talk about and consider the strategic plans for the next term so what does that mean uh, you all probably have seen in the hub the fall strategic plans have become active for you all. And what does that mean? I know it can be kind of confusing when you hear fall strategic plan and we're in the fall currently. Um, the fall strategic plan is actually going to be for the next semester. So this is going to be a great opportunity for not only you, but the new officer to take on the strategic plans and start to think and envision what you want the spring semester to look like. This can include potential events you want to have, potential dates that you have in mind to have your pledge education program or certain particular requirements that you want to fulfill, maybe your risk management event, a diversity event, et cetera. So this is a great opportunity to, you know, have everything, you know, out on the table, nothing be shut down and essentially have it be just a brainstorming session between someone experienced in the position and someone who's going to be taking it on next. Uh, so again, great opportunity to fill out those forms uh, since they are gonna be due anyway, sooner rather than later. So again, have that productive conversation of what you want that to look like and maybe provide insight to those new officers who might not you know, realize, hey, you know, this is actually a really busy month. Maybe you wanna consider this month versus this month. Uh, I feel like the most constructive criticism comes from those types of meetings and it really can help position holders gauge what their position is going to entail. Uh, so once you do that, 
you then want to access and review the hub with new officers. Uh, again, this is housekeeping of making sure that they have a hub account, that they've created an account, made a username, made a password, they're able to access it. And a little side note, if they're unable to, they can absolutely email us at hub at dsp.org. I'll probably say that again at the end of the presentation, but again, making us aware and making us able to help you all out so you can get access to the hub. But if all is good in the world and you are able to get into the hub, making sure you know what it's like um, to see the calendar, to see the CMP and see how it actively updates itself with different requirements, as well as how to add events to the hub um, and different, utilize, um, different things that you can utilize within the hub, such as the reports tab, the dashboard, et cetera. This is gonna be ready to use information that is only gonna be beneficial to your chapter. Um, and especially to your position. A lot of the information you'll see on there will be detailed strictly to your position. Um, so again, make yourself acquainted with that. You know, that'll be the one of the first steps that you will wanna take. Um, so again, ask those questions and feel free to check out the CMP guide again, right? I feel like a lot of the questions we end up getting around, around, about the CMP, we look at the CMP guide um to even seek those answers too so really acquaint yourself with that document it really helps put into perspective what we're looking for for different things or maybe i don't know what the risk management event is uh, it gives a really great description of what that means and what it is um, so then after that you're going to want to share experiences you had with the position so this is really going to be that person that veteran officer who has you know been down the road this last semester or this last term however your chapter decides to do elections you know they have just gone through the position themselves so they're going to know best you know what kind of things worked out for the chapter you know did we have a stellar event and we had over 50 people in attendance and it was amazing and we had a huge campus culture there and it was a phenomenal event or maybe we had a, an event that just didn't work for people and it was at a really inconvenient time everyone had class there was no flexibility there and it kind of was a bust or maybe you have something in between where maybe it was a promising event but there's absolutely room to grow and we can you know in the future do things to help better the event so again sharing those types of experiences the failures and the successes with new officers is only going to gear them in the right direction as to what to think about and maybe what to consider when they're thinking of events and times and dates and all the things that go into planning um, for any officer position. So again, just, you know, part of that transition process is spreading knowledge, you know, you live and you learn almost. Um, so again, something to really take into consideration when having that transitional meeting. Um, so the next we have set goals and compiled tips as an outgoing executive committee. So, you know, we put this one in here because a transitional meeting really shouldn't just be an officer and an officer. It shouldn't just be the old community service vice president and the new community service vice president. As an executive committee, this is a great opportunity as an outgoing EC to compile all your notes things that you thought were amazing, how you all conducted business, how you stayed on track, um, some things that you wish you did better as an EC, and maybe you had regrets or maybe things, things could have been operated differently. Again, these are all great opportunities to write these things down, have a self type of journal moment as an EC and be honest with yourselves as to, is this really everything that we wanted it to be, or maybe we had just such a successful time working together as an EC, we figured out our dynamic quick, so that when you have all that information uh, ready to go, you can give it to the next EC, the next group dynamic, and really see that they understand, you know, what it all means to work together as an EC. Because um, I feel like a, Jasmine can even attest to a lot of the things we tell chapters is, it's not your job to do everything. It's your job to make sure that you're doing things with others. Uh, that is the whole dynamic of the EC. So I feel like once you take that into consideration, see how you all have been operating and tell others how that has been going for you, that is a huge part to the transitional meeting as well. Um, so again, the idea of coming together to accomplish one simple goal, which is run your chapters. Next slide, please. 
Oh no. <laughs> Our slide person just walked away maybe. I don't know. Well, does anyone have any questions about conducting transition meetings? Maybe something that you have seen that has worked out astronomically for you or maybe things that you could offer advice to people here. Um, Sarah, I have a couple questions for you. Sure. So I'm recently new to being chapter advisor at San Diego State. However, I was a Delta SIG from University of San Diego back in the 1980s. So this is very fun to come full circle. Um, I do have a couple questions about elections. I made notes about your statements about it being anonymous. However, is there some kind of protocol that goes into um, auditing or validating that, you know, there weren't a dump, like a dump of extra votes in there, or is there something protocol wise that is required? And then do they send in like a certification letter or something like that? How does it work? For officer elections? Yeah. So how that's going to look is um, absolutely the chapter can have someone validate the vote. So Oh, the presentation's gone. Okay. Uh, so absolutely someone can validate the vote. Usually it could be the president, the VPCO, a couple people validating the vote count. That absolutely does happen in chapters. Uh, there is no necessity for sending in any verification. We see okay. that when um, the chapter submits their officer reports and they have that membership change and the officer role change. That's our verification of, okay, so-and-so is now a elected the chapter president. Let's send them that email you. Awesome. All right. So again, some important things to consider when having transitions. So, you know, there's going to be those important things that everybody feels like they forget or, you know, they're crucial parts to the chapter operations that people may not realize. Uh, maybe not this first one, but the first one is knowledge of the location of the chapter charter. Uh, again, this is going to be a really unique and neat thing that you want to have as, you know, not only a chapter memento, but it is literally something that signifies the beginning of your chapter. So it's really important to know where this is. We see chapters that display them in display cases or they have them in their chapter advisor's office or their dean's office or somewhere hung in their college of business. So wherever the whereabouts of your chapter charter are, try to find them, know that information so you can relay it to the next chapter president and the next executive committee in case they need it, uh, they know where it is. Uh, the next important piece to the transition is bank account and school account information. I can't hound on this enough. You know, knowing how to access and request funds from your institution. Uh, I feel like this is a very big one because, you know, again, this is dealing with a third party, right? This is sometimes dealing with an institution, a uh, different bank, or even just your school. So making sure that you know, number one, if you have funds, how much there is, how to, you know, get yourself added onto an account so that you can access it on behalf of the chapter knowing what that process looks like so that, you know, people don't graduate out and you, you have no chapter funds because no one changed the bank account info over to you, or you don't know how to request funds from your school. You know, making sure that process is clear cut amongst all members that, you know, need to know about this, probably your VPCO, your VP finance, your president are going to be key members into knowing this sort of information, just so that it can get transitioned over after them, but also so that they can still function as a chapter. Um, so that's going to be a big one. Next, campus specific items, you know, something that we don't state in our national policies and procedures or bylaws, or maybe the chapter doesn't have in their policies and bylaws. Uh, that's going to be, you know, maybe you have a key to a display case, or you have a campus space that you all uphold and take care of, or different um, obligations that you need to have within the university? Do you have to report a certain number of events and get them approved? Or do you have to reserve a room every, every week for chapter? Uh, central office is not gonna know the answer to these questions. Um, so we highly, highly encourage that during your transitional meetings, you talk about these university specific items because I, I can guarantee you that I've visited chapters where you have to document every move you make and every room that you uphold and every, everything um, and it's very documented in a whole system in the university but then there's the you know the under uh, other end of the spectrum where you just take a room and that's where you have chapter and that's where you do 
you know, your events or things. So again, making sure that you know what is your campus specific requirements and making sure that others know those as well. Um, that helps the transitional process a lot and it helps you guys stay out of trouble as well. So always a good thing. Um, make sure you talk about those campus specific items. Uh, and then lastly, your chapter inventory. So these are gonna be things like your ritual books, your pledge pins, your badges, your chapter gavel, uh, and then any memorabilia or keepsakes that your chapter has. Again, this is gonna be really important, you know, ritual books, every chapter should have eight ritual books. Um, you know, what is your current inventory of pledge pins and badges so that when the time comes to order those, we know what to expect because we know what we have or we know what we don't have. Um, and so we can plan all that accordingly so it doesn't kind of trickle up on us and we have late, you know, requirement, you know, uh, things in the hub because we didn't plan ahead, you know, with ordering these things. So again, making sure you take all of that into account through these transitions is gonna help lead to a successful chapter operative status for the year. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna go to tips. Um, so some of the tips that we have compiled, you know, while you're thinking about all these things, cause it can be, you know, a really daunting process and we don't want it to be for you. Um, during or after submitting your strategic plans, that document I was talking about earlier that it's gonna be specific to every position, uh, have a goal setting session with the person that had the officer position prior. You know, facilitate that discussion. You can even invite your district director or your chapter advisor. You know, have everybody come in on the conversation because more times than not, your district director or your chapter advisor is gonna see how your chapter has operated through years and years and years. Um, more, maybe even more so your chapter advisor. They've seen a lot of different waves of students come through. You know, they've seen what has worked and what maybe hasn't worked so well you know, for chapters and help guide you in the right direction. I can promise you that these individuals are only going to be there to help you. Uh, they either have been brothers themselves at collegiate chapters, or they have became faculty initiates and they really love this organization and want to see it succeed. So absolutely keeping them in in the loop is going to be super helpful and give you another fresh perspective on maybe I'm missing something or maybe we're not thinking about this aspect of things. Um, so highly recommend that. Another tip, review past CMP event submissions. You can do this at any time uh, in your forms tab. You can actually select completed forms. And when you hit that, you can select the form year and it goes all the way back to like 2013 when the hub originated. Uh, and you can see every single submission from any officer position at any time. And this can be really helpful because again, that transitional piece of hey, I can see what didn't work for them in this event and kind of what they wrote for that versus, wow, this is a really stellar event. They had it a few years ago. I don't know why we didn't do this again. Maybe let's bring it back and let's see if it's still a success years later. Um, again, kind of doing your research and doing a little bit of digging on your chapter can always be helpful, especially if you're a chapter that maybe has ebbed and flowed with CMP, getting accredited chapter or higher or lower. You know, maybe you have the goal of wanting to get accredited for the first time, whatever that is, you know, seeing like, hey, we got accredited chapter in 2018. Let's see what they did and maybe how we can reflect and mirror that. Um, so highly recommend just looking in the past, seeing what they did and, you know, evolving for the future. Uh, so next, continue to follow up all to follow, excuse me, all campus, local, state and federal laws ordinances, policies, everything essentially on gathering. Uh, COVID-19 is not over as much as we'd like to say that it is. It is unfortunately not. Uh, so again, make sure you follow those guidelines that your campus and your local government are setting forth for you. Um, again, it's a privilege, not a right to be on campus, you know, running as an organization. So we want to make sure that we're abiding by the laws of the land at your university as much as you are with the fraternity. Um, so again, that just saves a lot of trouble that saves the potential of something happening on the university level or them suspending you from, you know, even working as a chapter anymore because, you know, you're not following guidelines. So make sure that's happening um, as well. Uh, so then another tip, submit officer reports. Uh, again, that's gonna give us the go ahead to let 
the new officers know, hey, we recognize you're a new officer. We see that you're now the new chapter president. Let's get you like in the right track. You know, we are expecting that you have these amazing transitional meetings, but even if you don't, we're ready to give you an arsenal of resources between what you should be looking at, some best practices for your role, as well as some different meeting videos to describe how to facilitate certain types of meetings or how to, to navigate certain areas of the chapter. Again, just a great you know, resource that we provide to any chapter officer once you submit that officer report. So it's very crucial you do that. Um, and then last but certainly not least, the officer installation ceremony. Again, making sure that you have this moment with new officers and recognize them for their achievements and you know, installing them properly and having that ceremony. Uh, it's a great commemorative moment as a chapter. And again, it'll be something you will look back on, you know, as something like, wow, like I, I did this and now we're having an installation ceremony and, you know, look at all I've achieved. And it kind of gives people that momentum, like, okay, let's have a good year. Let's do it. Um, so again, just another tip, have that ceremony, you know, tell people, hey, we're proud of you. Let's send you off the right way. So. Awesome. Okay. So then resources. Uh, I know I had iterated a couple of these throughout my part, and I know Jasmine had as well. So some parts of this presentation that you really are going to want to look at and some resources that you can find all these on the DSP website. Uh, the first is going to be the individual officer pages. So this is going to be specific to each individual officer that you elect as a chapter. So it's going to have hyperlinks to different resources that's going to be prevalent to you, as well as different tips and tricks that maybe we didn't even talk about in this presentation uh, on how to, you know, have the most successful, you know, year, semester, however you run your election um, as a chapter. Again, looking at those officer modules, reacquainting yourself with some of the requirements you're going to be seeing, as well as hey, this is maybe what it's going to look like to be that vice president of professional activities. And it kind of walks you through and gives you some really great examples. Highly recommend watching those. And they're not super long either. Uh, and then the CMP guide, which is something I did talk about earlier. And the cool thing about the CMP guide is it does break down information in three separate ways. You know, like I said earlier, it does break everything down by officer duties. So it tells you what CMP items correlate to um, you know, what's going to be prevalent to you, like what, what's something the vice president of pledge education needs to submit versus the vice president of chapter operations and what that looks like based on the duty standpoint. But there's actually two other ways to view it. Uh, you can view everything just by the requirement itself and looking at, hey, this is what the requirement is. This is what the risk management event is, how you submit it, what we're looking for, and any additional comments or things you need to know when submitting and completing this. And it does that for every single requirement on every single tier of the CMP. So really helpful in answering those, but what about this? Or I don't know about this um, questions. And then lastly, the other way you can view the CMP guide is by due date. So again, this is really helpful in that time management piece, not feeling like you have to speed racer everything to the end of the year and overwhelm yourselves. Uh, it actually puts into order what you should be kind of expecting for uh, CMP related items. So it's gonna give you that column of the suggested deadline when we think you should be submitting things versus the harsh deadline of you need to submit this or you're gonna get a late or past due and you don't want that. So, you know, keeping yourselves in check of where we're at on this map of due dates and what we need to do moving forward to continue to be operationally successful. So highly recommend the CMP guide. I don't know if you can tell. Um, but then next, going over the individual and discipline policy. I feel like, again, this goes through expectations, you know, knowing what you all are stating as a chapter and what that means being a part of the chapter. You know, I'm paying my dues. I need to abide by our attendance policy. I need to do this and this and this. But then if something arises, what happens? Uh, check out the individual discipline policy and we go over things such as trials and how to avoid trials. Again, trials aren't fun. You know, I don't think they're fun for anybody. So, you know, how do we avoid those? How do we navigate those conversations? But then also, you know, if we have to have a trial, this is the proper way to do it. Um, so again, check out that document, acquaint yourselves with it. 
Uh, and then next, it's going to be local, national, local and national policies and procedures and bylaws. So again, these things are evolving constantly as the board meets and decides upon things. So making sure that you are looking up the latest and greatest information with DSP and making sure you're doing things right. Uh, feel free to glance over at those documents or if you feel like, you know, this doesn't feel like we're doing things 100% right. These documents are going to tell you yes or no on all of those things. Uh, they are the self-validation you are looking for. So feel free to check those out and just see that you know, if, any, if anything seems unclear to you all, um, you can read about it in these policies and procedures documents. Uh, next, Pledge Education Guides. Our Pledge Education Program has been in swing about a year and a half now. So uh, making sure that we're acquainted with what that program looks like. Uh, you know, if we're having a four-week program versus a five-week program, what does that mean for us? Uh, what does the curriculum look like? You know, so if a pledge comes up to me and asks me, hey, what about this in module one, huh? And you don't know what's in module one, right? Um, so making sure you know what's in those modules and what pledges are going to be learning so that you stay involved in that process. Um, and then next, fraternity operations page. So this is gonna be your one-stop shop for how to operate as a fraternity um, and as a chapter. So this is gonna, again, create some really great hyperlinks to different resources, especially from the Delta SIG 101 University, which is actually our next bullet point, believe it or not, Delta SIG University. Uh, these go hand in hand because they actually both provide different resources and hyperlinks to webinars, such as this one that you're participating in right now. Um, and it gives you an opportunity to uh, hear different people's perspectives on different topics ranging from transitions to navigating the pledge education program to this is what a risk management event is or how do we have um, you know effective elections we have a we have a ton of different webinars and workshops that are on this delta sig 101 website just for your viewing um, so looking at these specific topics um, whichever you, you want more knowledge on again it's going to be there just at your disposal so you can absolutely take advantage of it Awesome. So that does wrap up the presentation. I know I speak for Jasmine as well. We thank you so much for coming on this webinar tonight. I, I don't know where all you all are at, um, but it is 945 Eastern. So wherever you all are at in the world, thank you for spending your evening with us and taking the time to learn about effective transitions. Uh, I know Jasmine and I are both going to be open to answering any questions you all may have. So feel free to unmute, ask any questions that you may have at this time. Oh, the presentation went away again. Okay. Anyone in the group room have any questions? There's like five of you there. Hello. Uh, Hi. <laughs> we just finished our next meeting, so we have people stay around. I love that. That's awesome. Thank you all for attending. Yeah, of course. I don't think we have any questions right now, but I'm sure that we'll reach out if we do. Absolutely. Yeah. So you actually notice our first names on here. I'm Sarah without an H and then Jasmine without an E. You can actually just type in our first names and do at dsp.org and you can email us directly. Any questions, concerns, comments, hopefully not choice words, but you can send those to, um, you know, our way on anything that you may need. Any other questions? Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you all for having us. Um, have a great rest of your evening.